I'm Roxy Curry, um, and today's date is Tuesday, the 10th of February 2010. Um, and we're at Ruby's home uh, in the Hockley Road. And um, before we start anything, Ruby, I'll just explain why I'm here and, and what, what we're going to be doing with the interview, and just check that you're comfortable, and then we'll, we'll get going. Um, so uh, a lot of this is tied in with the 200th anniversary of the Rayleigh Windmill. Oh. Um, so um, some of the questions today will be about if you have any memories of, of the windmill, but it's also about sort of Rayleigh in general. Sort of, mm -hmm. we're, we're looking to recall people's memories um, of growing up in 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 Rayleigh perhaps members of the community or events that sort of happen, things that you, you've got, uh, you know, good stories about. What we're going to do with these uh, interviews is the, a number of things. Um, there, there's a sort of archive, that, um, um, a local sort of archive that we would be looking to sort of keep uh, the interviews on. Also, the Essex Records Office uh, is interested in having them on, on, on file. And um, also at, at the Rayleigh Windmill, um, you probably know, but there's a little museum and we're looking that, that visitors to the museum can hear some of those interviews, snippets of those interviews, all the full things. So that's what we're sort of doing. And we're meeting lots of people like you over the next sort of few weeks. Oh. How's that sound? All right? S sounds all right. <laughs> <laughs> they might be Good. more interesting than, <laughs> interesting than I am. Yeah. So, uh, so you're comfortable with everything? You're all right? Yes. I think so, yeah. Okay. All right, then. So do you want to start by just uh, telling me your name and how long you've lived in Rayleigh? Oh, yes. My name's Ruby Say. Uh, well, it was Ruby Sable. Is now Shannon, okay. and I've lived in Rayleigh. I came here in th 1933, I think it was. My father had to move to Rayleigh, and my whole family did because he was in the Essex Police Force, and they were building new police houses down on the arterial roads, and they built four houses opposite the weir for us, and uh, we were in number two, and number three was the uh, station with a blue lamp outside and the cells inside uh, where they brought any wrongdoers or anything and um, my father he used to stand in the middle of Rayleigh High Street where there's a, a mini roundabout now but he had to direct, direct the traffic in Rayleigh High Street and also down at the crossroads at the weir, where the arterial, which is the 127, we called it, the arterial road, he had to stand in the middle there before the roundabout was made. <laughs> there wasn't much traffic at all, but there were a lot of coaches came down from London to South then with, uh, you know, trippers to the seaside. <clears throat> and they used to stop at the weir hotel a lot as well. And uh, in the high street... Uh, if you saw any stranger about, you sort of wondered, oh, it must be somebody's cousin, because everybody knew everybody else there. And um, the kids all roam. We roamed free everywhere, you know. Um, nobody met us or took us to schools. And if anybody did, we thought, oh, God, we've got to go to the doctors or the dentist or something like that. Like that. But otherwise, we just made our own way everywhere and... Went to play in the woods or down by the railways, railway lines, and uh, over the commons. And there's a cutting, they called the cutting, where they cut through the arterial road with steep banks. We'd just sit on there and wave to all the coaches and people. And um, uh, in the high street now, uh, in those days, we had several grocers shops. There was a co-op grocers and green grocers up near the old post office on the high road and there was an international stores in the high street which is uh, Dorothy Perkins now I believe mm. and there was boys, the grocers towards the church and I think they all delivered they had delivery boys on uh, bicycles with big carriers in the front you used to bring round your you left an order 
they brought the groceries round in these boxes, cardboard boxes. And uh, there were uh, three butchers. Webster's was the main one in the high street. And there was Woods and Blacks was up near the church. And I can't think of any other. <laughs> no. And uh, Thorns in the high street was the um, ironmongers. And uh, they all had uh, either delivery vans or horse and carts. And there was plenty of horses and carts used to come through the town because the Coleman and... Milton. Oh, Milton, that's Baker. right, and Bakers, they all had horses and carts. And... Uh, pardon? Knew where to stop. Where oh, the horses knew where to stop. Yes, the horses used to stop. <laughs> and, uh, oh, the gypsies used to have, um, used to bring round logs, I think, didn't they? And come round for rags and bones and everything. And, uh, consequently, they had to have uh, several roadmen sweeping up the roads and keeping those clear. And they had little hand carts, like Costa's carts, where they swept up. They had big brooms and shovels to keep the roads clear. And I uh, can't think any more about the high street, really. Well, it used to oh. be a little sideway where that other little pub was. Do you remember? Where oh, that's right. Yes. Uh, oh, well, come on to public houses, I think. <laughs> yes, uh, there was a public house in the high street called The Checkers. I think it was only a four-hour bar. And there was a, an archway at the side of it and at the back there was the farriers uh, who used to shoe the horses. And there were two or three little cottages under there as well. Mm. And there was another... He was, I suppose he might have been a farrier years ago, but he was just the, um, the ironmonger. Yeah. They call him Blacksmith, Road. Eastwood Road, yeah. that's right. And we used to take round our shears and um, mm. lawnmowers and knives to be sharpened there. And if he was given a pound note, he used to stack them all, all up on the window. There was an open window there. He just just stack them up on nails, put these pound notes on, on the nails. Um, oh, the school, there was only the one school in Rayleigh for the infants, juniors and seniors. That was at Love Lane. And at the top of Love Lane, there was a, a little sweet shop we used to spend our Hapenies, you only had a hapenies to spend. And uh, Mr and Mrs Johns, this lovely old couple, they used to run the sweet shop. And opposite there was uh, the Methodist church, the first Methodist church that we went to before they built a new one along the Eastwood Road in about 1934, I think that was. Um... There was a Belisha beacon that led to the uh, across the road to the school, and my dad often had to stand there and see the children over safely. Uh, Can I ask oh, you? Oh no, I've forgotten a bit. I'm sorry, I was a bit I've stopped a train of thought. I wanted you to. Um, we can go back to that mm -hmm. in a minute, but I wanted you to know that you can sort of pause and I can ask you oh, questions right. if you don't, yeah, okay. if you want to take a breather. And uh, um, But um, what but was, thought, mm? what what had you forgotten and you wanted I'd to forgotten say? I'd forgotten that, um, you know, I was saying about the butchers. Well, Mr Webster, that was the, uh, there were the big butchers in the main high street. And there was an abattoir at the back where they, um, the steers the used to go to be slaughtered. Right. Webster's Field. Oh, I know that belonged to him, but I'm just saying right on the back of it. And uh, these steers often used to get free. <laughs> They'd be running all over the high street, and uh, of course we'd just shoot in a shop doorway and get out of the way till somebody took them back to the slaughterhouse. And what, what time would, would that have been? When you're talking about these times when you were a child, what, what era are we... What year? Oh, uh, before the war. I mean, 35. Yeah, 35. Up. Mm. Before and the war, anyway. And you mentioned yeah. about your father 
um, working for the police. Is, is, did, was, did he always work for in the police force? He was a policeman. Well, yeah, of course he was. Huh? Oh, yeah, um, well, he was a military police in the, uh, in the First World War. And then, luckily enough, um, he served 25 years... And then they had what they called the um, crisis, I think, uh, when um, Chamberlain went over yeah, and yeah, got yeah, the... Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, so he had uh, got the uh, peace treaty supposedly signed and brought back. But, so he, had, he just did another year. He did an extra year, so it was 26. He retired then and we moved along the Hockley Road Next in time. the June. And in the... Sep- was it September? September the war was war. declared. Oh, okay. o- otherwise, he'd have to stay on for the uh, yeah. duration of the war. <laughs> so he was lucky to get out, really. And then, after he did that, he worked at Rochford Hospital, which is now, it's closed, isn't it, now? And he worked on the nighttime switchboard in the hospital. Um, See, That's in the this bit. plot and that bit plot was all one garden. So he had all this garden to look after. Mm. And it was another 60 He used to do a lot of gardening, uh, besides our own, long. because we used to grow, we, you know, self... We grew all uh, his own veg. Yes, we used to grow... Um, and, yeah. Do you want, to, <laughs> want me to bring out the <laughs> veg? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and the fruit. <laughs> and and the yeah. chickens yeah. and the ducks. Yeah. Well, it came in handy because in the war time we used to yeah. we used to have yeah. our own rabbits. We used mm-hmm. to breed all these rabbits mm-hmm. for for eating, yeah, and yeah, yeah, had one a week. Yeah. But we had to go out. Us children had to go out and collect all the rabbits' food. Nobody bought rabbits' food in those days, <laughs> so we had to collect it all, and we had a dry dry crust of hard yeah. bread for their their teeth, and uh, pick all the and not just grass. You had to know all your herbs and what they liked, and pick all these. Choice herbs all over the fields. They were lovely rabbits to eat. They were lovely, lovely yeah. Nothing like <laughs> wild rabbits, nothing like that. No. Oh, when, you, when you talked earlier on about some of your memories of the shops mm-hmm. along the high street and in the, in the town, do you, what, what do you remember about the windmill and its sort of place locally? Did you ever go up there or...? No, no, I can't remember ever going up to the windmill, but uh, some friends' fathers used to work there, uh, delivering, uh, you know, by lorry, but I found out that one of my friends, he, he died last year, but his father worked in the mill, he in the mill and he lived in uh, one of the mill's cottages. I think they might still be there, top of, top of London. The hill, top of London here. And as a matter of fact, if anybody's interested in the, for the museum, the other week, uh, my friend's widow, she got all of these christening robes all these stuff that belonged to, to um, yes, David Beckwith, yeah, Mr. Beckwith, and all these sons were christened in these robes. And I said I'd ask you if you if you thought they'd be interested in yeah, seeing some. Yeah, they were, although they were yeah. boys, they were still yeah. long dresses. In those days, that he used to be christened in. No, but his brothers were. I mean, and we don't know how old those. They might even be a hundred years old because they might have come, been handed down, mightn't they? So, Mm. if you let us know, Mark, if they want, if anybody wants so. Yeah, fame with farmers in them. Still got one of the fame. Still got farmers. Yeah, down Holbridge. Yeah. Can, <laughs> can you remember the name of the person that worked there? Oh, Beckwith. It was Beckwith. Beckwith yeah, His name yeah, was Beckwith. Yeah, yeah. And one of them that did the driving was Hymus. Oh, yeah. They lived up near the mill Hymus, as well, up yeah. there. Right near the mill cottages. I'm parched. I'm parched. I'm parched. You're thirsty, I know. Ah, all the one is another big water. Mm. <laughs> oh, did you want him to see? Sorry, I'm saying, I'm saying nobody wants it. Um, I was going to tell you about the school, actually, wasn't I? 
That'd be great. Yeah. What, what, what are your memories? Tell me about being at school. That's right. I Parched. <laughs> Not used to talking so much. <laughs> You want another cup? No, I'm sorry, but you want one room. Oh, if, if there's one there, I was going to have a glass of water, really. Oh, they all say I'm always drinking two cups. What about Roxy? Did you help? I didn't want one, thanks. No, thanks. <sighs> How do you stand up there and give all that <laughs> spill out of the blooming. <laughs> Yeah, history class. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, no, no. The sorry, sorry, but, uh, that's okay. Sorry. Yeah, I remember my associate because my aunt moved down in 1934 and she lived in Grove Road. And I remember going up the mill with a loose suit on it and a Norfolk jacket and sliding down the. <laughs> <laughs> My dresses were covered in this brown mud. Yeah. I, I don't know if I ever wore the suit again after that. Yeah. I used to get lovely nukes around the, in the, um, on the crested nukes, you know, all around the moat. Yeah. Mm. Some yeah. people I've spoken to remember sort of going to the mill to buy some corn or to buy something, and it seemed it was something that children often did for their parents, and I wonder if that was the same for you. No. Your dad used to have it delivered, didn't no, you? it wasn't from that mill. It's from, from uh, it, it was from the mill at Battlesbury oh, Battles. that my great uncle built. He built that mill down there, but that was a water mill, I think. Yes. And he used to get Math Matthews. He was a the miller then, yeah. and he used to come and deliver all our chicken feed. Yeah. And we had that in big, big sacks. Uh, seed and mm. meal, it was, wasn't it? Uh, corn and me in a mixed yeah, corn. Yeah. Well, that was for Matthew. But I suppose other people. I can't. He may have come down to where I can't remember. I if he Jackie came there. there. Oh no! Of course we didn't see. No, he didn't. No, it's when we come up here. Yeah. That's when your dad was self-sufficient. You know, yeah. talk about it like all new, but it wasn't. People used to do that, you know, in those days. And my father, like the um root vegetables, my father used to make what they call clamps, like the, for potatoes and carrots and parsnips, swedes and turnips, things like that. He used to um, dig them up, make these big clamps. It was mud, mud mixed with straw and clamp them up for, to you know, last over the winter and just sort of dig up you know, what you needed and then fill it up again. He always tickled me. He was a great big man. I don't know how much he weighed. He was huge. Sixteen stone. And he used to garden, and he'd had immaculate rows of vegetables all thinned out and all everything. And he weed standing up like the hell. I mean, he ever managed to get down there and weed. And my <laughs> father, he, he never, <laughs> and never he had to look at shirts. <laughs> He never had to look at the calendar to tell him when to sow oh, no, anything. He just knew when never, to he do, just knew yeah. the season of the year, yeah, year and what to lot, put yeah. in, and yeah. 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 And really he had a license to sell. He had a license to sell fruit and veg oh, yeah, out the front, out the front yeah. there, and they had yeah. to come and the um, uh, customs and excise had to come and test your scales. <laughs> But I think we probably gave them a few over, you know, in those days anyway. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so what was I supposed to say? You, you can say whatever you want, but I think you wanted oh, to talk oh, a bit oh, about your school. About school. You wanted to you talk about your school. You keep sidetracking me. Get off. <laughs> well, oh, dear, don't, don't, don't be all well. that. Well, I have well, to look at you when I need you. Well, I'm trying to get it in the right context, don't I? <laughs> Thank you. Um, right, a love Lane school, uh, when we were in the, I say we because I was with my twin sister at the time, when we were in the infant school and learning how to write, we had to use a slate and a slate pencil. And uh, the slate, uh, the pencil was made out of hard grey... 
Well, well, we called them slate pencil. Yeah. I don't know what they were made out of, really. Oh, yeah. And to sharpen them up, we used to sharpen them up on the side of the wall outside on the brickwork. And in the Love Lane School, in the doorway, you can see these notches where we used to sharpen these up. We had a little sponge we used to rub it out with. And then we'd, when we'd learnt our letters and our numbers and figures and everything, then we went on to pencils. And I can't quite remember when, when we went on to pen and ink. We might have been about six or seven when we went on to pen and ink. We had little ink wells. And, of course, we were always crossing our nibs and getting in trouble and making blots. Yeah. And we had little blotting papers as well, so you blotted your work. But we used to get the cane for almost any little misdemeanour you can think of. I mean, looking out the window talking to the person next door, no, chewing a sweet, no, no, no. Um, not, knowing, <laughs> not knowing your work, I suppose, as well. You used to get the cane or smack or something, or stand out the front. Uh, that was boys got the chalk slung at them, not girls. And if it was really bad, if you'd done something really bad, then you had to go to the headmistress or the headmaster. We, I think there was just a headmistress at uh, Love Lane School, and then you got really smacks with a ruler. Did you go to school in Rayleigh during the war? Oh well, that's all in my. That's all on my. Mm. Yes, or oh, I could read from that if you like, couldn't I? Where is it? You could tell us some. Oh, well, I've written something it. down here as well. I've written it down. Oh, oh! Start from the t shall I start from the top here? You can I need... read it. Yes, yeah, or read it to you yourself. You can cut and, out whatever chat about, yeah. about it. Yeah. Uh, I was nearly twelve when the war started. My twin sister and I went to Rayleigh Secondary School, now called Fitzwilliam School. We were issued with gas masks, which we used to have to bring to school every day. There were two large dugout air raid shelters built on the school playing field. One for boys and one for girls, and the male teachers were in charge of the boys, and the girls had lady teachers. Every time the siren sounded, we left the classrooms to go down the shelters and weren't allowed out until the all clear had gone, even if we had to wait till after school hours. Do you want to hear about the games we used to play? Yes. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. right. We used to play games in the shelter and sing a lot and play games on paper or cat's cradle, a game with string. And if we weren't, if the teachers weren't looking, we varnished each other's nails. <laughs> we used to collect pennies to buy a, a bottle of nail varnish between us and uh, varnish nails, yes. Not red, of course. You wouldn't be allowed in school with red nails. There were two long benches facing each other and a couple of Elson toilets at the end an escape hatch opposite the toilet. We used to uh, climb out and have a look sometimes if the teachers weren't looking, they'd be at the other end. Sometimes we went down three times a day, even if they turned out to be a false alarm, and we prayed that that would happen during our maths lesson because we all hated maths. <laughs> um, I can remember during the war time, we children being measured and weighed at school to see if we'd qualify for it for clothing, clothing, clothing coupons. Uh, I took Ambridge when I was told I didn't qualify, and my twin sister did. Eventually, I did get extra coupons. Uh, we had evacuees from Chinkford and Woodford schools, so we were a bit crowded, two or three to a desk sometimes. Uh, I also remember one day going down Victoria Road to collect rose hips to make vitamin syrup, uh, vitamin C that would be for babies and they used to sell it at the clinic along Eastwood Road and they, uh, they may have even given it away, I can't remember and also one day some military personnel brought round some willow branches to our school and we were shown how to make wattle hurdles for camouflage we had to set them up in the quadrangle in the middle, there was a grass quadrangle, and we had to set up these 
stakes into the ground and weave these uh, wattle hurdles for camouflage to put around the guns and things. Um, oh, sorry then. Um, earlier on you were talking about um, your pocket money as well and, oh, and, and money, sweets yes. and what you might spend it on. Do you want to spend some more time talking about that? Oh, pocket money, yes, it usually just went on sweets. And uh, if you were lucky, you had uh, a halfpenny a day for the morning and perhaps a halfpenny to spend at night <laughs> as well, mainly mm. on sweets. And there used to be a cinema along the Art uh, no, the Benningham Lane. Mm. And the first old one I can remember was called the Cozy. Mm. And uh, I think they had uh, viewings for children in on the Saturday morning. It was about Thornton's. Up, up mm. That might have been your London ones. <laughs> 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 You've got them cheap. Now, I think it was fourpence. And uh, we had uh, a, a, like a B film, which is sort of perhaps a children's sort of film. And cartoon, uh, and a cereal, a cereal, a children's cereal like Tarzan, uh, young Tarzan or something okay. like that. And that used to be a cereal. And how and old? Hmm? And how old would you have been at this time? Um, six. Yeah. You never went to fifty when you were that. Yes, I did. I used to go. My big sisters oh, used yeah, to take me. Well, it was only in the morning, Saturday oh, morning. Oh, Saturday morning. Oh, Saturday oh, yeah. morning pictures. Oh, yeah. And yeah. what was it like inside the cinema there? Uh, a bit of a bug house, really. I think you'd call it. Oh, and in the the cosy, as you looked up, there was like a trellis work. And it had all these artificial <laughs> flowers <laughs> and vines all yeah. winding through, the box like the there. tropics, yeah. yes, that's right. Yeah. And because uh, we thought it was great when they built the Regal, yeah. about 1936 or seven. Yeah, yeah, yes, because yeah. it had some nice curtains and plush seats yeah. and oh, it seemed a lot bigger yeah. as well. They're probably charging more than Fulton for the... The kids' morning thing, I can't remember. I think if you had a lucky ticket, you, you might win a prize. Oh, yeah, that, yeah, mm. that, what yeah. sort of prizes would they have been? Oh, it's probably like a box of Ludo or games like that, I think. Mm. I can't remember ever winning one, really. But, but, no. Mm. Um, what we're talking about besides... Oh, yeah, or oh, with so much oh, to money talk to about. spend. Yes. Oh. Uh, oh, I was going to say about the buses. Yeah, yeah, great, uh, yeah. That's right, there was um, a bus, bus routes running through the main roads and they had regular bus stops, but anybody could stop a bus anywhere. You just held out your hand. And even if you was a kid on your own, the buses would stop for you. And the cheapest, it started at a penny. You could go sort of about a mile for a penny, I think. Yeah. Mm. I can't remember how much it cost to get to South End. I think in the war, it was one and nine if you went on the Hockley Road route. Mm. And that might have been return. It would be return. He yeah, returned, one and nine return, that's yeah. right. There used to be um, buses, city bus used to come from London. Wood green to go right yeah, south. city buses came from London, it took about two and, a half hours and the yeah. Eastern Nationals used to come right from Clacton and go through Malden, I think, yeah. and then they used to go on through Romford. I don't know where the no, depot they was. It might be in. Didn't they? One bus used to go to Chelmsford. Chelmsford. And they would all that come through Raleigh. Yeah, all stopping like that. That might have been the Eastern yeah. National because I think Eastern the city National. buses yeah. just come up from London mm. and went along the uh, Eastwood Road. Mm. And South then was a depot, wasn't it, there? Yeah. yeah. Do you want to get some water? <laughs> if I could have some water, I'd have to keep having a swig. Oh, that's at the other school. I'll just do this yeah, one first. Yeah. Like I was going to say, um, this is... Uh, still pre-war 
they oh, really always had a carnival uh, uh, in the summertime, and they had a procession that started at about Wheatley Road and then used to go through the high street and it was fancy dress. Like and Princess Queen. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes, and they used to choose the... Every year they used to choose the Carnival Queen, Carnival Queen from a girl in the top leaving classes of the senior school. And they used to choose four little bridesmaids in the... Uh, leaving classes of the juniors and one year I was the <laughs> I was one of the bro what did they used to call those uh, ma maids of honour that's right like, one year I was a maid of honour I and think I was about nine and how did that make you feel being made I hated maid it. of honour <laughs> <laughs> I hated it I didn't want to be in the line like I said to the teacher not me I I said oh let my sister be it she said no no she said I, I've given you my vote, and will you do it for me? So I had to condescend. That was, what was her name? Ah, oh. Mrs. Merson. Mrs. Merson, her name was. I've just remembered. And how did your sister feel that you were picked and she wasn't? I don't know. I don't know, because I had a nice, um, we had nice little gifts, and I had a necklace with little glass beads on, and I kept that. It was on a silver chain. And I kept that and I gave it to my eldest daughter's daughter only about two years ago Thank when she was about me, ten. <laughs> uh, that's <laughs> right. So we had the... And then they judged the procession. They judged the um, fancy dress in... Uh, we always called it... It was Webster's oh, Meadow. Mr. Place, Webster, Webster the butcher yeah, owned... Yeah. The meadow that is well, now called King George's there. Field. But it was really Star Meadow, but we always call it Webster's yeah, Meadow. Fine. And uh, they had all side shows uh, on the Carnival Day and uh, coconut shies, things like that. And flower shows, I believe. And uh, on May Day at school, we ha used to have a maypole and we had to dance around the maypole. I think, well, I think some people, well, probably the choir sang, uh, like mm. floral dance and things like that. And we had these ribbons, and we had to weave in and out, dance around the maypole till it plaited, you know, as far as you could go all the way down. Yeah. Uh, what other events do you remember? That's well, we had Empire remember? Day. Yeah. Uh, I don't know the date. You might know the date, Empire Day. Sure. I don't know, there was always an Empire Day yeah. and we always had to dress up in white dresses and the boys all had to wear white shirts and we girls had to wear these red and white, red, white and blue ribbons yeah. and we had to walk to the Trinity Church and we had to sing uh, patriotic hymns. <laughs> and all that no, not in church we didn't. It was uh, things like... I vow to thee, my country, and yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, hymns, yes, Patrick, hymns, that's right. Uh, well, you singing in school, didn't you? Well, we, yeah, we did, we used to sing a lot in school. Yeah. But, oh, this wasn't a, a school thing. We, they, we always, um, on the boat race between Oxford and Cambridge, we always picked our, which teams we were, which uh, university we were, favouring and used to buy little favours yeah. uh, you know the dark blue or the light blue ribbons or yeah, little feathered um, favours we, we only we heard it on the uh, radio yeah. we didn't yeah. Um, yeah. it wasn't uh, well they wouldn't have shown it on the uh, newsreels no, the newsreels I'm talking yeah. about I was oh, talking about radio I was going to say something about radios when we were children and yes, we used to have uh, the first radios were cat's whiskers, yeah. and uh, of course, father always had to sort of get the cat's whisker lined up, and you listened on headphones, and then so everybody could hear it. Mind you, it was very vague and scratchy. They used to put the headphones in a big 
mixing bowl. That's right, so you could all be here and all sit round. And I can't remember if it's anything interesting at all, really. With a bit of music, you never had music. I can't remember. Wind up the records, you know. But then the uh, the next ba- uh, the next ones we had we used to, and all the kids had this job of going and getting the accumulators charged. Yeah, get the accumulators charged once a week. Once a week, and you had to go very carefully with the accumulators because they were glass. Full of acid. Full, yeah, full of acid. That's right. They had a handle over the top. We had to hold it by the handle, take it to Colvin's in the high street. It there was a. Was it a bike shop or a radio shop? We probably yeah, did them both. And, and get the uh, accumulator charged. And pay, well, you get you pick up somebody's old one up <laughs> that was charged really, yeah, and carry yeah. back home very carefully so you didn't spill it because it's hmm. full of this acid. Hmm. And I can't remember, could it be half a crown or? Oh, no. no. Not Pen- half a crown, Pen- was yeah. it? Yeah. Did have half a crown. <laughs> 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 I don't know. And uh, then after that, of course, we had dry, dry battery ones, mm. didn't we? And then we had the electric ones after that. I think that's all I was going to say about What Colvin's. else do you remember about sort of home life? And you talked about the food and that earlier. Oh. And How cold it was in the winter. Oh, yes. I mean, they, they laugh about these winters and call them cold. Well, every winter we expected it and we got it. I mean, snow, two feet high, you think? Often, yeah. yeah, so high. And, of course, we, we had all had to walk to school. No matter where you lived, you had to walk yeah. to school. Nobody had any fur boots or no, high boots. No, nobody Wellington. had any boots. We'd, everybody went in Wellingtons. Yeah. And then you changed, when you got to school, you changed into a pair of blimp soles. You, you put your blimp soles on yeah. And that was it. And but then also, the, it, it seemed to be extremes of weather then, because we had very, very hot summers. And I used to pray for it to be ninety, because I loved the sun, and I used to pray for it to be ninety. <laughs> and it often was. And what would you and do then, in your summers when you wasn't at school? Oh, well, we used to. Um, well, we used to go up the woods, take a picnic, or take a picnic over the fields stick somebody's baby in a pram and take them as well, take all the little kids, take the dogs, and just go anywhere we like, pick flowers, yeah. loads of wildflowers everywhere, and pick flowers and bring them back. And, and what we, we used to do being boys was, but where the brambles, you know, and blackberry bushes all used to Oh, grow, we used to go blackberry. We used to them out, and that was your camp, you could virtually hide in them, you know. Mm. We used yeah. to go blackberry a lot. and. Uh, yeah. Ground your own amusement. Mm. And uh, start, uh, used to pick sloves because mm. people used to make a lot of go jam scrumping. in those days. We used to go, oh, I didn't have to scrub because of the orchard. <laughs> <laughs> um, Am I right in thinking that your family had a pub or there's something linked oh, with the no, drovers? We, and we lived there. Uh, and did I, you? I think. <laughs> three, three sorry, yeah. Oh, sorry, that was. Uh, I wondered oh, whether me. you would sort of help there as a child or perhaps it was a bit later on. And No, when uh, we moved up here, it was already an, an old house. And, uh, but, oh, well, actually, my grandfather, you don't want me to go back to my grandfather. Yeah, it would be interesting, uh, well, yes, then, yes. Uh, It was a pub Can I just, drove, while you do that, the microphone there is, is under your arm. That's it. You'd forgotten it was there, didn't you? <laughs> Good job. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to stop oh, you dear. there. So you were talking it's about your grandfather. Up. Oh, no, it's just because in the drovers, like when it was a pub, at that time, my my grandfather, he was driving a wagon and horses for a uh, Battles Bridge Mill. And uh, I'm not quite sure how far they had well, they'd go to had to they'd go. go. It might Martin, have been to Rochford. I'm not sure. Like he wasn't selling animals. He was on the grain. grain and, and he used to stop at... The uh, pubs were open all day long in those days. And he used to stop at the Drovers and have, have a drink there on his way to Rochford, I suppose it was. 
and uh, in, in, one day um, he had to take my, my <coughs> mum and one of her sisters with her on the cart, and he just plonked them on the uh, the bar. That's right, while he had a drink. <laughs> but yeah. uh, when we moved here, it was a house, wasn't it? When we first moved here, there was uh, nothing outside. But uh, one of my sisters lived in the flat above there, and when we were first married, we went and lived with her for three and a half years at the Drovers. Uh, lovely big rooms. Big wide. Late, very late Georgian, early Victorian house. So it's quite nice house. Wooden floors, yeah. Can, and, you, uh, can you remember some of the characters that would sort of come into the pub, or would there be? Oh, there wasn't anybody. Was we, that wasn't a pub then. Was that was a house, you see. I see. Yeah. That was a house then. Hmm. Let's see if I missed something. I've, I've just, um, um, I've just been reminded that, um, and this is going back to the windmill a bit that. One of the millers there in 1943 was murdered. I could on tell the you all about road. that. I could tell you all about that. Can you fire It would be great to hear what you can remember. I might have put it that. down here. I wonder if I'll have. Perhaps what you remember yeah. rather than sort of reading it. Oh, well, um, well, the millers. His youngest son was in my class at school, Colin, Colin Brown. And the older boy, Eric. Uh, we all, well, we knew him. We always used to wave and say hello. He was quite friendly. Uh, he was quite a bit older, I think. And uh, when I last left school, we had to leave school at 14. And uh, we didn't... My mum didn't want us to go in the forces or go away because both my eldest sisters were sent away to work in the war. Uh, one had to work in Pies Radio in Cambridge and the other one went to work in uh, Hoffman's. Hmm? Hoffman's in... Oh, she worked at Hoffman's first. No. No, she worked at the air... Airborne first down the Arterial Road, but when she was older, she went to Hoffman's in Chelmsford, making. I think it was mainly that she was on was making ball bearings for all the well, uh, for tanks the and things like that. That's a, what was I so, so, I Colin, so Colin, so oh, Colin, who was the miller's oh, son. Colin, what, what, yes. what do you remember about him? Well, he was very shy and he was a quiet. Um, Bit of a recluse sort of for a boy, but apparently his father wasn't nice to the boys or to Mrs. Brown, and uh, he wasn't really, he wasn't well liked at all. But uh, one day in the summer, my my father was working on, at Rochford Hospital. He had a holiday off, and he decided to take my sister and I to and mum to. Um, packed them for a day out and when we came back uh, outside our house there were a lot of soldiers with uh, minesweepers oh, no, metal, metal detectors, detectors metal detectors sweeping out on the greensward out the front and uh, we asked him you know what they were looking for and they said there'd been a bomb well we thought it was um, a wartime bomb you know because they that be yeah. Not unusual. <laughs> but the next day, when my sister and I went to work, that was, we worked in the nursery over the road, Gatton's Nursery, uh, then they told us that uh, Mr Brown was being taken along the road by his nurse in a wheelchair, and uh, he'd hit a bomb. Well, of course, we didn't know then that, uh, that uh, Eric had put the bomb in the wheelchair under... The cushion, and when the nurse had to, you know, adjust the cushion and everything, it exploded. 
And what was your reaction to that? Well, absolutely horrified because if we'd been going to work, we used to come home every... It was called lunch time, but we used to call it dinner time, midday. Come home every day, we'd have probably seen it or even... (laughs) You know. Well, you used to say they would flip the Oh, I know. Well, that the used to. Still. They were. And, and like I remember, said, yes. You uh, saw the boy, the young boy, and he was crying. Oh, yeah, but that was at the funeral. That's yeah, another bit. So you went to the funeral? I, no, I, I went past on a bus. Oh, wait a minute. Um, anyway, uh, there were some old, old people living over the road where the bomb was and uh, the old lady came over to the nursery and said could some of the men bury this leg that was in her front garden <laughs> so they, they just went over and buried this I shouldn't laugh yeah, went over and buried this leg really, and f- for years after there was all these bits hanging on. I think it's just clothes, it might have been clothing but it used to frighten me when I got all the bus at night time and I run past just run past this so where the bomb was. So you think bits of the, his well, clothing was, sort of hung? Yeah. Clothing, I think, yeah. And there was only a small hole in the road, like a like a pothole would be, really, where the where the landmine went off. It's just like a flat landmine. And of course, he Eric had got it out of the stores, hadn't he? So they soon. Which stores? Oh, he was sorry. He was an army. St- he was in the army. It was an army store. He he'd taken it home deliberately. And why do you think he he did that? Because he hated him. Mm. He wasn't nice nice to the mother, apparently. He wasn't wasn't a nice... He wasn't a very nice man. And uh, anyway, before he was convicted, his funeral, I think it must must have been that there, because I remember going past on the bus and I was saying, oh, Eric, um, I think his name was Eric Brown, I said, he was he was laughing and talking to his mum at his father's funeral, and he was laughing. Yeah. Well, that's before we knew that he, what he'd done. Yeah. So he still thought it was a, you know, well, enemy. Yeah. So nobody sure. suspected at the time that it well, was murder. I don't know. They may have, may have done because they the army soon traced where the um, landmine came from, and because mm. when they found that he was in the stores and handling it, that was it. But some. Um, Anyway, they um, they said he was of unsound mind and and put away during His Majesty's. Uh, I don't know how long he served, yeah. But I saw him about five years afterwards. So whether he was out on parole or whether they just let him out, I don't know. Do you know what happened to the Brown family afterwards? No, I don't know what happened then because Connie must have left. We had to leave school at fourteen, so. He must have left, and I don't really know what happened to the family. Mm. No. And do you know what happened to the windmill afterwards? Did I don't know who took it over after that. Somebody must have run it because it was running for years, wasn't it? Uh, mm. That's really interesting. Thank Derek you. Derek would have known, wouldn't he? Yeah, he would have known. But he died last year, so yeah, it, the, yeah. the chap his father <coughs> used to work there. Mm. So where's the leg buried? <laughs> well, it's just up the same side of the road here. Because the house is gone now. There's no house there now, mm. but I could point out which way it is. <laughs> Somebody dig up gruesome, that in the gruesome local Ooh, history. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's my notes. We what else would you like to talk about? Wait, oh, I was going to talk about school. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Um, have I done all this the junior school? <coughs> oh, it's about days that are things that we used to do. Oh, boat race. I've done boat race. Oh, we used to have Sunday school outings. That's right. This is before the war. Because during the war you weren't allowed to travel anywhere. And uh, <coughs> we were going to the Methodist church and we used to go to either Malden for the day or Walton on the Nays. And I think we must have gone on the train. Well, I might have been on the bus there. <coughs> but our, the, the outing that we liked best 
was the Clacton outing. That was on the trains. And it was the other school, the uh, Sunday schools used to combine on that, so there was quite a lot of us going. And uh, parents could come as well. And it was a lo- lovely sun. We always had a lovely... Oh, the sun always used to shine, I'm sure. <laughs> we always had a lovely time at Clacton. How did it compare to South End? Did, did South End oh. never feel like a day out because it was no, too No, it wasn't close a day out. Or... We went nearly every weekend yeah. to South End, and, well, we liked that as well. <laughs> and But at Clacton, they had uh, a lovely... Well, there was, there was a good pier at South End, but I think there was a lot of amusements on Clacton Pier, if I remember rightly. And there used to be people doing these sandcastle competitions... Mm. Uh, yeah. And how would you travel there? Oh, that was on the bus. Uh, no, on the train from... We must have gone to Shenfield uh, on train and then got on the other line to go to Clacton. So it's quite a long journey, really. And then I think I think we must have taken our own <coughs> packed-up sandwiches, really. And another thing we used to look forward to, this is uh, the Rayleigh... They used to have a sports day, and the firemen used to put on the sports day, the local firemen, mm. and they had all these games going. They used to have the, the greasy pole, cl- climb the greasy pole, and then they had the pillar fights, uh, where they used to have to uh, be astride the, this uh, pole that they used to erect and uh, knock the daylights out of each other on the um, till one fell off onto the ground. And, and where uh, was this? Oh, this is in Webster's, uh, okay. it, which is King George's yeah. field now. And they used to have slow bicycle races <laughs> where, where you sort of had to go backwards almost, didn't you? Well, the boys used to do all that, really. And, uh, of course, they had the other running races and uh, high jumps and things like that. Uh, and also in Webster's Way, they used to have a circus every year. And uh, oh, one day my father said, oh, you never guess what I saw coming up the high street. And it was a herd of elephants. They were bringing elephants. Yeah. They must have been on the train, yeah. just walking in line up to Webster's Way to the circus. Yeah. Uh, that must have oh, caused yeah. a commotion. Yeah. yeah yes. Uh, I think they had an- other animals there, did they, lions oh, and... Really? Oh, yeah. Lions. Yeah, but they, yeah, more than horses and everything, trapeze and everything like that. And of course, we had all the swings and roundabouts then as well, and cake walks. And where were they? Oh, it's all near the meadow. Yes, it was a big, big meadow, wasn't it? The caterpillar, wasn't one called the caterpillar? I can't remember if they had the caterpillar. That was at the Curzel. I don't think they run to a caterpillar at. <laughs> we used to have good fla- uh, flower shows there, didn't we, though? Yeah. yeah. Oh, a character that I was going to talk about. You wondered about a character, didn't you? Yes, please. And uh, the, the uh, character that I remember when we came to, Ra- to Rayleigh was Albert Cable. You know Albert Cable? Well, he, he always seemed like a teenage boy. I, I think he must have been... An, in his early teens, in the 30s. <clears throat> but he was crippled in both his legs and always walked with two sticks. But he was always were up the high street and everybody knew Albert and everybody spoke to Albert and he knew everybody. If he didn't know your name, it was, hello, girl, you know, <laughs> and talking. And uh, everybody, well, the local bus... Conductors always used to let him on the bus free. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you used to let him on free. And if if any of the conductors tried to charge him, oh, everybody said, no, Albert always goes free, you know. Mm-hmm. Either that or you paid mm-hmm. your pennies for him and, and everything. And why does he stick out in your mind more than... Well, um, I don't know, he's just one that is always there. He was part of the high street, really. But in the war, one night when we had some really bad bombing. His uh, cottage, he lived down near the Weir in the a row of cottages there, he lived down there, and they were bombed. And Albert was under the uh, rubble, 
And I think it was, I don't know how long it was before they dug him out. It wasn't the same day. It was a long while under the rubble. And I think some people got killed that day as well. Were there a lot of people that you, that you remember where that also happened, where they were bombed? And, and how um, did that sort of change things and make you feel at the time? Well, one of the... Uh, one of the uh, bombs that dropped there killed several people. This was a little bit further up. It was still the high road. And it killed several people, including a young girl that had been at our school. And uh, she was our headmaster's secretary. I think she's only about 16. And she was she was killed that night. No. No. Oh, H.E.'s, I think, because uh, there was always used to be a dance on at the weir, yeah. and uh, lots of the, you know, um, uh, soldiers and yeah. everybody used to go down there. And my friend went with her elder sister, <laughs> and because uh, these bombs came just as they were coming out of the. The weird the dances they used to have their dances, and uh, she said this poor man was running about naked. He's he'd been bummed, mm. and he was running about with no clothes. And she gave him her, her coat, and uh, it was a new coat. She don't know who he was, or yeah. and she never, of course, she never <laughs> saw the never saw the coat. Again. <laughs> what was it like in Rayleigh during the war, living here? Oh, I think everybody seemed quite happy, you know, if there was a, a queue anywhere for it, anything, you just joined it, and you say, what, what's it, what are we queuing for? What are we queuing for? Because even if anything wasn't rations, it was hard to get. I mean, if it's toilet paper, and that used to be all recycled, it used to be all different colours, all recycled out of newspaper and everything, and... You sort of queue up for that, or you queue up for anything, pencils. Soap. Fun? Soap and all sorts. Oh, of soap. Yeah. yeah, but then that was rationed later on yeah, during the war. Yeah. yeah, that was rationed, so you could you could get it. Um, Would you like another drink? It's mm. mm. We've been chatting for over an hour <laughs> now, <laughs> and... Um, um, I'm in no rush to you get off. Tape. You should tape. You should tape. Tape plug out. it. <laughs> um, and um, uh, there's a oh, yeah, yeah. couple of things I want to ask. But, yes, you know, yes, It's yes, just yes. To, to, to let you oh, know, just, you know, mm. what, what else that you want to sort of say today. Oh, I was going to say about Lovely School, wasn't I, when we went there. I got talking about the pencils and what's the name. And... Um, I can remember the it had the uh, Mrs Ashcroft I think that was her name or Mrs Ashworth. Uh, she looked like something out of Dickens. Really, our first teacher we had. She was dressed in black. Mind you, she was a widow. She was dressed in black from head to foot, sort of thing. And she probably wasn't all that old. But uh, anyway, there was a coke stove that was right near near her. You know, so she kept warm, and we used to be freezing. And, uh, oh, if ever there was a break, she used to hand, say, well, now hand out the knitting. And there was a box full of, there was all this knitting. You, you got anybody's knitting chipped, chucked at you to finish off. And it was on steel needled, needles and, like, yarn string. What happened to it when you finished <laughs> it? Was, oh, it's got put back in the box again when she finished. Put the knitting back. And probably just, oh, it had all holes in it, or yeah. you know, if a boy had been doing it. Because the boys used to have to do it as well. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, oh, I was saying about, uh, that's right, the uh, Fitzwarm Arts School, it was built in 1938. Well, we, we moved up there in 1939. But uh, sad to say, there was a boy killed in a snowball fight in... When the first year, the first winter, mm. and uh, it was found that he had a thin, a thin very thin um, temple, I think, and this 
hard snowball will hit him on the head mm. and killed him, yeah. Was so he someone well, that you knew? or No, no. Him? Well, I knew his name. I mean, you knew everybody's name in those days. But uh, anyway, um, when the war started, I can't have a look here, um, we had the evacuees from Chinkford and Woodford. I think I might have said that, mightn't I? That's right. And how oh. did you get on with the people that came oh, from Oh, we loved them. Just fun, yeah. 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 Yes, that was quite amusing and made us laugh and told us jokes and, yeah, it was great. Oh, and us, our, our school was commandeered for a few weeks by a regiment of brain gun carriers. Uh, they're small tanks, that's right, mm. so we had a few weeks off school, but they'd churned up all our playground and... I think we, it took us quite a while. I think we had homework sent home so we could do all this homework while the soldiers were in there. Mm. And uh, we had a um, Scottish regiment that was uh, billeted in the town for quite a while and they used to um, be quite entertaining because on the Sunday morning they had church parades and they marched up and down uh, in the high street playing bagpipes and drums mm. and marching. Yeah, so... They weren't the same lot, oh, well, not the, the Pipers, no. No, that was another um, yeah. regiment. They mm. used to commandeer all the houses and all the empty houses. Mm. Uh, okay. And, uh, also during the war, you talked about the Scottish there. What about German or Italian? Were there any sort of stationed here? Oh, well... And, um, there was an, the, an army, um, I don't know if you call it barracks, there was an anti-aircraft uh, battery down off the Royal Lane, between the Royal Lane and the London Road. They had some big anti-aircraft guns. And I don't know if the um, Italians were there or not. We had uh, Italian land, refugees, that's right. They used to work on the land and... They used to be digging up potatoes opposite our house there, as happy as Larry, they would be singing and laughing and calling out to you. Did you ever talk like to them? Them. Well, <laughs> waved to them? Well, I waved to them. Wave. Wave. They had a couple of soldiers looking after them, just sitting there smoking sort of they thing. They, couldn't, <laughs> they were quite happy to be here. They they, I think they had a yellow diamond. Yeah, the, diamond um, back, yeah. I can't remember German prisoners. Well, I, don't, I don't remember German. Yeah, well, you weren't... Yeah, you were in London, weren't you? It sounds like um, um, it sounds like a lot of things have happened on this road over the years. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, that used to be, you know, fields all. Like I told you, Mark, haven't I? From Hambro to. Oh yeah, the top of Hambro Hill. From Hambro that, Hill there was, to the there Drover's was something Park. Something special there. We never re- I never found out what it was, but there was a circle and it was full of broken glass, wasn't it? Oh, that yeah. yeah I, I would think of. Put yeah. that here, and I might, or did I, I tell know, you about it? No, tell us about it. Oh, sorry. It. Yeah, wait a minute. Um, oh, gosh. Oh, yes, I put that about John in there. Yeah. Okay. So what no, was the circle, was, circle, was it? No, well, um, at the top of Hambro Hill, yeah. there was um, a searchlight battalion up yeah, there. The they had a searchlight and they had a small gun. They didn't use the gun very often, I don't think. But um, they they built a big circular, it was just a circular. compound. Yeah. Yes, they had railings all round. And of course, we weren't allowed to go up, but we could see it from here. And uh, after the war, when we went to up to have a look, yeah, we went inside this quite a big compound, like um, corrugated metal around the outside and inside it was all mirrors and light bulbs and they only used it once in the war and this night when they put these searchlights on Mm -hmm. there was an air raid they lit these all up Mm -hmm. and apparently there had been a a circle of it all around London but I don't think it was very effective because they only used it that once. Well, but it's always just called the secret weapon. Oh, they've got a secret weapon up there. 
Yeah. Oh, so, uh, so what happened to it after? Is it just, just covered all over? Up. No, if you went up there, I bet you'd find a load of glass it's and stuff. Path. There was a footpath yeah, it's a, a public along there, footpath. down past the cemetery. And we used to, when we were called, we'd walk down there, you know. There used to be nightingales down there. Oh, this is early on in the war. I'll read this bit out. Uh, our family, it was night time, and our family was all woken up by ARP warns. There was us four girls at home as well. And uh, they said we all had to be evacuated at once to Love Lane School as an une- unexploded uh, landmine, a paramine, had dropped in the Fairview Plain schools near the Hockney Road entrance. <coughs> my mother, myself and three sisters were picked up by Mr Noakes in his lorry with other women and children from Hambro Hill and we were given mattresses to lay on at the school but my father's friend who had a shoe shop in the high street, he put us up for the night, Mr Smith. And uh, my father went back in the morning to feed the chickens and rabbits and the sentry let him through. He said it was up to him. And uh, a, a naval uh, bomb disposal unit dismantled the mine and we all went back to see it. It was a huge cylinder, eight foot long by two foot, on a silk parachute with huge ropes of plaited silk and somebody gave me a piece of the rope. So that's at home somewhere, I don't know where. Um, Oh, uh, when the war first started, we were all given identity cards and we had to show them if we wished to go into South End, which was a restricted area at the time because I think I it belonged to the Navy. That's right. I, I was lucky the Navy. because my mum just evacuated herself down here and I got my identity card made out to Grove Road, you see, so right there I could come down. Mm. Otherwise you couldn't travel in those days, no. Stop. They stopped at Wickford. And did you ever find out about that big tank trap there? No, no one's ever heard no, of it. No, when they crossed my grandfather's land. There. You know, all great big ditch all around mm. there by shop. Tank gate. trap, miles long. No one, no one seems to have seen it except me. <laughs> <laughs> I knew about it. Um, they had to stop, you know, with the other car army. There at Whitford and then at the top of the chase, Lady Chase. And then there's a big round, yeah. round all just to stop yeah. the tanks coming through. Anyway. Anyway, we to go into South End along the Hockley Road, uh, the RAF regiment was uh, billeted at Rochford, all in the houses along by the what they call South End Airport now. And uh, our buses used to be stopped by the sentries at the Warners Bridge before you crossed over into the South End area. And if you hadn't got your identity card on, you weren't allowed to uh, travel. You just turned back and had to go back on the next bus, even though we were kids at the time. Mm. And the beaches were all covered in barbed wire. Mm. Oh, this is about an air raid. One night... I think I was about 16 or 17, coming home on the train with a friend after being in the pictures at um, South End, and there was an air raid on, and the driver stopped the train under Warner's Bridge as the aerodrome was under attack. It was, it was, it was really frightening. The noise was frightening. The planes were diving about and coming down, and uh, they machine gunning, and the mm. men were, they had... Uh, Field, uh, field guns on the airfield, yeah, didn't they? And uh, yeah, yeah. you could hear all these men shouting and all the searchlights going off. And would that have been while you were here or are you still talking about when you're in yeah, South Sand? Is that next door? OK. Living here, living here, coming yeah. home, coming home to Rayleigh. And I didn't tell Mum, <laughs> tell, tell my mum how awful it had been when mm. I got home because otherwise I wouldn't have been allowed yeah, out right. again. Yeah. So you just kept yeah. it quiet. And if you were at home and there was an air raid, what would you do? Well, we hadn't... Well, it's funny enough. We hadn't got an air raid shelter, but at the beginning of the war, my dad thought he'd build one because he had quite a piece of land here. So he dug this uh, enormous hole and he boarded it all up. <laughs> and then he boarded over the top of it. 
but he he put a haystack on t- on top of it. Come on, come on. He put a haystack on top of it. <laughs> and I remember the, the first night this air raid siren went, so we went down this shelter, and my my older sister uh, put her her gas mask on. Of course, we all we all laughed. <laughs> I said, you don't have to put that on until you hear the rattles, because apparently if it was ga- <laughs> gas, they were saying the rattles. Anyway, uh, after a few uh, weeks, I don't think we bothered to go down. It you just... Uh, and uh, it filled up with water. My dad put the ducks on it. <laughs> he put the ducks down there. <laughs> yeah. Mm. In the ground and because up the, the high the street, they had their raid shelters. There was a big one behind the cinema. Oh, yeah. mm. a, a, what they call... Yes, there was a dugout, I think, behind the cinema. Yeah. And then in the high street, where the near where the um, uh, memorial is, they had a block one, like a brick built mm. building, mm. so you could go in yeah, there like that. You know, in London, the same. And uh, the some people had the... Anderson's shelters outside mm-hmm. in they the garden. Corrugated iron. Corrugated iron. Then used to grow marrows over the top. Yeah, <laughs> Grow marrows. Um. Mm-hmm. A lot of people got a bit blase about it, you know. And, and yeah. Well, one day... People used to live in the underground, you know, and uh, yeah. the other didn't seem to bother that much, you know. Mm. Well, trouble is... They had a friend that I knew. They had a, a shelter. They had an outdoor shelter. And one night there was an air raid. And they went in the shelter. And I think the girls said they wanted a drink. Mm. Mm. And the mother went indoors, Mrs Martin, to get the girls some water. And the house was bombed and she was killed. Mm. It's very sad. And that was a friend of yours. Well, I knew her from school. Mm. There were three. I think there were three girls. Mm. He was a nurseryman. I think they had a nursery at the back then. But um, <laughs> one day, I don't I can't remember if the sign had been because I think it was a V two. It was terrific anyway. Walking to work one morning, it was six o'clock. Uh, I think I'd be about sixteen, and I'd called for a couple of friends, so we we were late, and uh, we were walk, walking along arm in arm, and all of a sudden there's this terrific. It's funny you don't hear the noise. This terrific rush of air, and we were blown back against this wall. And of course, we went on to our little factory. It was just near the near Webster's field. Mm. Eastwood mm. Road, wasn't it? Eastwood Road, yeah. And of course, when we got there, it was all um, well. We would have been killed because all the glass had come in. Mm. There were a few other girls in there, and of course, all the row of shops, all oh, they'd lost their roofs all by mm. by Queen's Road. So, and the, mm, was it? Was the how, how often was the town? Or, or rather, how many times over what sort of period was was really here? Um, and how did you feel in between and that whole time? Was you ever did, well, did you get on with things or? Well, well, you had to. I mean, <laughs> I think I've written this bit here because one day um, I was working in, working in another little factory along the Eastwood Road and. Uh, there's only sort of six of us doing three shifts, I believe. And this this girl that I was with, she said, oh, I'm, I'm absolutely fed up. Nothing exciting ever happens. And I'll never say that again because she went home that night and uh, they, they were bombed and she had to be dug out from under the rubble. And she said all she had on was a short vest and this fireman that rescued her, he said, I'll jump on my back, girl, I'll give you a, a piggyback out. So he gave her a piggyback out and somebody gave her a blanket or something. But I believe her brother was under the rubble. Well, he was concussed, I think, her, her brother for quite a while, yeah. But I'll never say it, nothing exciting ever happens. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. So, yeah. 
So and how uh, it how has Rayleigh changed over the years? I mean, I mean, we could talk for hours, I guess. But what are some of the things that you have noticed in the big changes? Uh, well, of course, they've, they've altered the high street a lot, haven't they, with the uh, Webster's Way being built and the the two-way thing. And I believe they, they... I can't remember when they closed our police houses along the arterial road. They changed those into offices. And... Um, Do you think the changes. people have changed? I mean, there's well, still yes, a lot of people that you know that have been uh, here. Not many. I mean, you go somewhere and you don't really know anybody. But the sad thing about it, that they changed the old building in the high street. They were supposed to leave a lot of those shops, uh, you know, in the old style that uh, where Martin's is. But well, there's only one shop. I look, when I sometimes go up on the bus and I sit at the bus stop there opposite, and there's one bit of Tudor roofing, I think it is, one of the old sweet shops, looking across from the west side to the east side, what was the little um, frost sweet shop? Frost, that's the one I'm talking was about, it's frost. frost. Yeah, and I'm uh, sure that's still a bit of the old Tudor roof there, you know. That's near Boots. That's near Boots. It's near Boots, right near Boots, yeah. Um, and that's a little bit of the old But the Gaslight and Coke Company, that's still a lovely building, they mustn't touch that. Yeah. Which building's that? that? Um, mm -hmm. Yours. Used to be Sansom's. Uh, Sansom's took it over for a gents outfitters after the gaslight and coat. Mm. They closed down, didn't they? Oh. And that's still a nice shop. But there used to be several bow-fronted old uh, oh, yeah, shops. There yeah. used to be a sweet shop called Jennings up near the church. That always had a bow-front on it. And, well, and in the high street... Meat. What was that one? There was an old house. Pars. Oh, old pies, that used to be, be yes, they used to it? make um, that, nice. that pot pies <laughs> and hazlitt, <laughs> hazlitt, <laughs> yes, so all lovely homemade <laughs> meats. <laughs> another another <laughs> shop that we had in the high street, oh, it wasn't a shop, it was the Saddlers. Oh, Mr. Yeah, oh, the Saddlers, yeah. Stuart? That was one of the first The Saddlers, yeah. Made. They built a little supermarket there, didn't Well, they, they built, they before had, that, they built the Saddlers restaurant, because pies... Car shop nice. took that over. And there used to be a petrol the pump there outside Hinkman's garage. You know, because there's about four cars in Rayleigh before the war, I should think. Mm. Mm. Yeah, but still after um, the war, you could get petrol there, you know. Yeah. People started getting cars. Mm -hmm. in the 50s, I suppose. Mm -hmm. mm. Remember um, my first one I bought, 40 pounds. 1936. <laughs> Uh, what else has changed in the high street? Um, and on and on this road as well, or anywhere oh, else? Oh well, that this you road. I mean, there's all fields over over there. There. Yeah, there wasn't many houses along here. You know. Mm. We took a photo in the fifties of a horse ploughing that field there. Yeah, yeah, somewhere. Yeah. Didn't we in the mm. early fifties? And there's a bit of a five bar gate. Down Nelson Road. Mm. Yeah, got mm. the opposite mm. there. There's a farm just down the top. The dairy. Mm. That was another Beckwith, yeah, same yeah, family. Yeah. The yeah, dairy. He used to take his cows over there. Oh, when, we, <laughs> when he was courting me, as they called it, my dad used to say to him, don't forget to shut the front gate because the cows might the get cows in. Get in there, and of course, cow, he'd be in a London, he used to think that road, was hilarious. But was one day, flying. he did leave the gate open the and gate there was all the cows in the I front. We were married, Ruth, oh, we might have been living in that front room. The window, There's all the cows all eating cows my dad's flowers and hedges. Gate open. Yeah, yeah. And I would another... Who amuses him? But our daughter, when she was sixteen, she bought her own pony, and the mm. weekend she used to bring it round. You know, Carol, don't you? Yeah. Mm. And um, there was a little shed we had built there. You know. You made us stay the corral it thing. A cesspool. It had back where the cesspool was. And this, before we were there. Yeah, before the um, oh, before your mum and dad lived there. Wasn't yeah. It, you know, and uh, this all kicking about and it put its foot through the floor, you know, because it was all brickwork. <laughs> yes. And we dug all that out in the end, didn't we? Mm. 
Well, people, I yeah. It was stable, well, some people did have cesspits oh, in those yeah. days, and lo lots of oh, people yeah. had uh, bucket and chuck it, they used to call it. It was just a shed down the yeah, garden well, with a yeah, tin well, loo in it. Yeah, lived in Grove Road until 1950. They weren't on the sewers. Mm. You know. Well, mm. we had flush lavatories in Trinity Road when we oh. went there, but I think you had to go outside to those. So when we moved down the arterial, that was sheer luxury, you know, oh, yeah, we had a big bathroom upstairs yeah. with a plumbed in bath because yeah. everybody else had tin baths <laughs> that you had to, <laughs> had to put in front of the fire, mm. in front of the kitchen range. A thousand range. foot long. Dear, oh dear. A thousand foot long. Oh. Five blocks of ground they had. Mm. I better not see if I've written something down, it might be interesting. Still there, the old house, so I'm so blimey. You mentioned oh, um, the, mm. the Beckwiths again. So mm. as, as the Beckwiths worked at you know, the mill, but yeah, you also had a dairy. Oh, that was the. Um, they, there were a lot of brothers Beckwith. Uh, one had, I think, they had originally had a farm. The grandfather or great farmer had a farm down Bull Lane, bottom of Bull Lane. It's called. Um, I forget the name of the farm. Oh. I think the building's still there, right down the bottom of the lane. Another one had the farm in Holbridge, down Mannion's Lane. Yeah, they might have sold that, I'm not sure. What happened to and them? Then they Did had a dairy there. None <coughs> had a dairy there. Um, Do you suppose that any of the Beckwiths still live locally? Well, yeah, the sons do. There. One's a teacher at... Oh, yeah, Peter, Peter teacher is a teacher at... Swain, at Swain. Oh, Swain. Yeah, yeah Swain. Swain. Yeah, he's a oh. teacher there. And Brian, he lives in His wife's Eastwood. A Bullens, Mike. Oh, are they? Bullens, yeah. Oh, Peter. So they can trace their name back. To Anne Boleyn, yeah. They um, come from Rockford too, as well, mm. isn't they? I was going to say about Rady's, Rady's the senior school when we moved up there, and it was only a year old, and we thought it was marvellous mm -hmm. because uh, we had all this equipment for gymnasiums that we hadn't had in the, the junior school and we had uh, special uh, gym kits to wear as well and we had showers and we had footballs but of course when the war came we weren't allowed to use them not, not allowed to use the uh, showers in case we were caught in an air raid and we weren't allowed to go to any schools to play sports or anything against any other not even Whitford you just couldn't move out of the area. Mm. And I think for one time they didn't have any football matches on anywhere mm. in those days. Mm. Mm. And uh, Ruth's father came from a farming family and oh, up yeah. the top there. That, that wasn't raining. Mm -hmm. That's High House Farm. Mm. And it's it's like that now and it's falling to bits. Down, it's falling to bits now. Where is it? it? Uh, uh, it's, it's a high house farm, Rettenden, the turnpike, as you go to... The turnpike, the new road that mm. goes down to... Mm. Mm. Wood and Ferris, Wood and Ferris, yes. when it goes down to Wood and I know, yeah. The old road. You go down there. The, the highest the point. Goes up a hill. It's on the old maps, you know, the old... Down. It's called oh. High House. There, High House Farm. And it's all falling to bits. It's falling to bits. It's a shame. It's wooden. It's a shame, but it's an old Essex building. Beautiful. Yeah. Frame. It's all falling it's to bits. Building. And your, your grandfather. My father was born yeah. there. Your father was born there. Yeah. Yeah. But they, those grandparents yeah. died before my father got married, so mm. I didn't know. But what that. happened? He was in the army, and his mother was in the They've died in about the same year, I think. They weren't very old. Right. And the oldest right. son took it over. And then he moved down over to the... Pitsy. Pitsy. That was good. They were... Ah, that's they where my granddad lived. They were tenant farmers, weren't they? Mm. Yes. So your family are foot, but all, are all from this part, or on your my side, south east Essex? My yeah. family yeah, this part of Essex. Well, yes. Mm. But his family are Londoners, but his auntie lived in... Rayleigh yeah. with her children My since. She moved the same year as our family, I yeah. think. Yeah, 30 33, 34, 33. Hmm. Um, <laughs> I said about it. Great big parties there. Right. 
and uh, uh, I met Rube at one of my cousin's wedding, Patricia, and um, that was about... Oh, sorry, I haven't told you about this area. Yeah. What, was I What's in the that? middle of this area? Oh, it's a... No, no, he started talking. I'm sorry, I have only... It's okay. Oh, no, well, no, no, I have said all that. Sorry, that was about the, um, the paramine in the... Mm. Yeah, I said that. What's looking what else? Can you see? The light's got a bit <laughs> low now, hasn't oh, it? Oh, I haven't, I haven't told you this bit. OK. But just a minute, I want to say about my brother-in-law. OK. Um... One day uh, in December 1944, I was surprised to see my father waiting at the bus stop when I got home from work to meet me off the bus. He told me that my brother-in-law had been reported missing, shot down over Germany. He was a pathfinder in, on Lancaster's, and my sister, who was living with us, was expecting his baby. That baby, well, actually, that baby is dead now. He was 60, 60 how old was he? 60, Not when he died? Yeah, I think no. Mm. No, he was older than that. I he was in his early 60s. He wasn't very old. No, old. anyway, he, yes. Uh, he, he was in his 60s uh, and he knew he was dying because he got methicillin uh, yeah. asbestosis. Oh. So he knew he was dying. And uh, a few months before he died, he and his half-brother and their two wives, they hired a travelling van and they went over to Germany and visited his grave and uh, they took some earth from Essex and they took his... He was a, an officer. They took his officer's hat and they took some things and and photograph the the grave. I can't I can't imagine what your sister yeah, and the family would have felt. I had like. a doctor find it was a long. It was uh, he was he he got shot down near the Dutch border, I think. Mm -hmm. And they buried him in a churchyard there. And then uh, it might have been after the war they moved their bodies to. Uh, uh, you know, a massed sort of military grave uh, yeah. quite a long way into yeah. Germany mm. and they had a bit of a job to find mm. find where it was. Mm. Mm. But for your sister here on her own yeah. with a child yeah. on the way? Yeah. 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 And uh, she got married again when her when boy married, was about... Was yeah, Michael was about... Five, I think, when she got married to um, yeah. Harry, that's right. He, he had been in the um, Marines, mm. that's right, and then she had Geoffrey. I suppose you weren't alone with other people from the town who had lost brothers or sons? No, or the lady I used to get, get the bus with her. Her son-in-law, he had worked in green... There used to be a green store with little groceries in the high street and uh, he used to work there as a young boy and he, he was in the parachutes, uh, parachutists, I think, at Arnhem mm. and uh, he got killed and quite a few friends' brothers got killed. And I remember a boy in our class, his father got killed in the army. Mm. And we've only done the war, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's as much as you want, you know, want well, to talk about teachers, or as little. Yeah, our teachers... Um, when we went to school, we see well, we didn't get a lot of schooling really because we were down the dugouts a lot of the time, mm. and also our, our teachers kept changing because they had to go off and the go in the forces. They so we, they we had all different yeah. teachers. Mm. Oh, is it a reserve occupation? They still it? joined up. What was that? Came to the I was tall mate. Mm -hmm. I learned to be a tall mate. 
Mm. When I was 18, I volunteered to go in the Air Force. Mm. Mm. Go in the Air Force as Air Crew. Mm. Yeah, so, so I did. Oh, that's when I was saying about Al- Albert, Albert Cable, that's right, and of uh, course um, he sort of had a new new life when they, uh, after the war, they started a d- um, disabled um, club at the Mill Hall, I believe, and uh, he used to go there a lot, and people used to drive him and take him there, and then he joined one in Hockley, which was quite popular, uh, and they used to get taken on outings and all that. And uh, I don't know if it's through the paper or what. People clubbed together and bought him um, a motorised, uh, what do they call it? Scooter. Scooter, yeah. you know, the yeah. trolley yeah. thing. Yeah. Right. So he, he could oh, whiz around yeah. on that. Yeah, mm. so he had quite a nice life in the end, poor Albert. Mm. I've sort of come towards the end of the questions that I mm-hmm. wanted to ask you but um, if there's anything else that you wanted to talk about that's fine well, what do you think, what do you know Mike <laughs> yeah. what do we draw about on the phone yeah. <laughs> and I say to you, oh I remember this and I remember that and well, get carried away probably enough yes, to yeah on. for now yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, well, we know this again but the first door there I, I remember was, oh. must have been nineteen. Well, when we and they dropped that oh the stick of bombs, bombs yeah the all the way across oh, yeah. here my god road, and they dropped a stick of bombs it must have been attacked you know this area it dropped about seven or eight bombs no it's 14 because i was 14, i was, was counting them and you get this going yeah was Byford, you know, backwards the, not byford's backwards cows down the bottom there oh and they killed byford's fields oh and byford's and cows yeah. as well oh well, yeah you know where the raidy lodge or the field there used to be a lovely big of those Luckily, it yeah. never it never hit Any a property. No. And it started it started, started dropping in them. By no, I thought it started further down than that. It came right across the country. Anyway, yes. it came to, of course, well, I think we got under the bed. It was night time. I think we yes. got under the bed because they were getting woo and going down. And my oh. mum was crying because... My dad had just gone off on his bike to go to the hospital. Mm. And I said, don't worry about Dad, Mum, he's in Rockford by now. I remember, I thought, <laughs> girls girls and, and they were shelling it was, yes. it was and bang, 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 bang. Yeah, one after the other, nearer and nearer and nearer. It broke a window by my bedroom it. where I was well, well, in you're bed. That's part where they're dropping on. Oh, right? and also, yeah. it... So, it blew down our, we had gas lamp, uh, gas lamp on the gas back in those days. Oh, it blew that down on our, our bed and it blew the <laughs> gas, gas packets down. And luckily, because the government paid for everything, they, we had electric wiring and they paid for all, all the electricity to be mm. put on after that. But I think they ended up in Hockley Woods because yeah. there's a lot of bomb holes yeah. in Hockley. Um, and you know um, about all the secret army, don't you? Yes. Yeah, secret army. Yeah. yeah. But so well, these gas mantles, they were a little white sort of metal uh, thing. They and it called was asbestos. It, it was sort of cotton. They, what asbestos. did they call that? If you touched it with a match, it just bang, it um. went. And so you just had to get a gas cover. And because children were always poking the match up in that, and you broke them. You always made them poke the match through it. And that was mantle. Like a little mantle. They called it a mantle, mantle, a gas mantle. mantle. Mm. It was so like spun. You know, and it was just like so cobwebs, wasn't it? Well, you broke the mantle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to get it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> okay. you know, I remember the top end of the shape, mm. there used to be a little sweet shop. It was a wooden building. I don't mm. remember. Yeah, I do. Yeah, everything smelt of paraffin. And then everything smelt and tasted of paraffin. Mm-hmm. You bought yeah. a bar of chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> oh, because uh, <laughs> yeah, mi- that was another person that used to deliver us from Thorns. It was Mr. Southgate. Oh, he right. had a horse and cart. Yeah. And he used to bring around, because everybody had to have paraffin for these Beatrice stoves. What were those? Beatrice stoves. Oh. Stone. Mm. Banner, Beatrice. Banner. Banner. Mm. Beatrice. Yeah. They used to bring soap and candles yeah, and stuff like that. that high, and they they smell. Flame inside, you know, not 
And that's all you had in your bedroom if you were lucky yeah, in the winter. Lucky. Otherwise, you <laughs> froze and you had one <laughs> fire, one fire, and everybody crouched everybody around it. If anybody out, opened the door, oh, shut the door. Mm-hmm. It was so cold, wasn't it? All mm-hmm. the frost the all down the inside of the windows. Yeah. If you had the goldfish in a bowl, that used to freeze on top. All oh, ice. Yeah, I remember ice. the goldfish freezing wow. out the skull. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we had snow not water bottles didn't we and yeah. they, so they went out and like oh, clonk it's coming it's again although it's stopped at the moment yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm screwing up me now it's well, well. I was reading well, there's a book I was reading was saying there was uh, a pound in 1945 yes is equivalent to 5p nowadays Probably. Yeah. yeah about well, right. Oh, we used to have, when we went to Woolworths, we had sixpence. My right. dad used to say, sixpence to spend, and, yeah. they, and they let you, yeah. they let you out. Yeah. You know, you roamed around yeah. and spent your sixpence on. Well, we used to buy nice things, really. Uh-huh. Celluloid doll or something. Right. Ruby, I've got um, here, this is something for you to sign to say that you agree that we sort of hold the interview as a record and mm. the, um, to go into the sound archive. And cut out any twaddle you don't want to Well, what we, what we, we can edit this all down, well, you see, good, and we yeah. would do that. Oh, it's coming in. Oh, it's only the paper. Yeah. Oh, OK. Um, yeah, that would be good. It's been really interesting listening to you. The, I, mean, um, so, I mean, there's enough there for us to get going on. But oh, good of course, job, there, yeah. There, if, there would be so much more.